What up guys, Gozen here for Anime Uproar and today we are going to be talking about the goddess Elizabeth and how strong she is. This video was suggested by a bunch of you guys and with what happened in chapter 315, it seems like the perfect time to make this video. Make sure to smash that like button for more 7 Deadly Sins videos. If you haven't, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any new 7 Deadly Sins videos. As always, leave suggestions for other videos you would like to see in the comments. For even more 7 Deadly Sins content, conversations, and crucial updates, follow us on Instagram at Anime Uproar. Keep in mind, there will be manga spoilers in this video. As always, to get a sense of Elizabeth's power, we're going to be looking at all of the evidence available to us in the manga. At first, Elizabeth Leones seemed weak. Her power level at one point was measured at 1,925. She scored a 1,700 in magic, a 5 in strength, and a 220 in spirit. It seemed like the much stronger Meliodas was always saving her. We kept getting new power levels for Meliodas. His highest measured power level was 142,000, but he's gotten even stronger since then. In contrast, Elizabeth didn't get a bunch of updated power levels. However, as the series goes on, we do get more and more clues that Elizabeth is way more powerful than her first measured power level would lead us to believe. Near the end of the first season, Elizabeth awakens to her goddess powers. Before this, without realizing it, she had helped heal her dad, her sister, Meliodas, and a doctor. But it is only after the goddess mark appears in her right eye that we start to get a sense of how powerful Elizabeth is. The aura around her is so powerful that we even see the outline of goddess wings. King can't believe how powerful she's become. Then her energy field even overpowers Hendrickson's attack that threatened the lives of all of the wounded fighters present, including the Sins. Her magic envelopes the entire capital and heals countless people, some of who were on the brink of death. After this, Elizabeth notices that Hawk still appears to be dead and she faints into Meliodas' arms, so we don't get to see more of her at that time. Still though, in one very impressive moment, she could stop Hendrickson's strong attack, hurt him, and heal everyone else in the capital who wasn't already dead. It is only because Elizabeth heals them all that Meliodas and the others are able to execute a plan that defeats Hendrickson. So, as early as Season 1, Elizabeth proves that she is strong enough to play a vital role in the defeat of a powerful enemy. Eventually we find out where Elizabeth gets all her power. Elizabeth is so powerful because she is the 107th reincarnation of the goddess Elizabeth. In her first life, Elizabeth confronted the Endura version of Derriere and Monspeed. Any demon who has a power level over 50,000 and offers up 6 of their 7 hearts can become an Endura. Endura are considered to be the ultimate evil form, and they're extremely overpowered. The Endura have no problem overpowering the Archangels Tarmiel, Sarmiel, and even Ludoshell, who at least has a power level of 201,000. However, Elizabeth is powerful enough to stop them. She doesn't even need to fight with them. Her magic is powerful enough to transform Derriere and Monspeed back to normal, although she does get some added support from Tarmiel and Sarmiel. Still, the fact that Elizabeth could stop these Endura, even when someone with a power level of at least 201,000 couldn't, speaks to Elizabeth's own power. By the time they fight Melascula, Elizabeth has the goddess sign in both eyes. She is able to help free a possessed Deanne, and she is able to heal Bon and neutralize Melascula's deadly poison in an instant. In the end, it's Elizabeth's ability Tranquilize that turns Melascula, the commandment of faith, into a harmless snake again by cleansing her of the Maya she absorbed in the demon world. Up to this point, we've mostly seen Elizabeth use healing spells or cleansing spells in battle. However, she does have impressive offensive attacks too. When Assault Mode Meliodas wants to become the Demon King, Elizabeth decides to stop him with the help of the Seven Deadly Sins. Meliodas is not about to let her leave. He has just recently completely overpowered Zeldris, Estorosa, and Kusak at the same time without breaking a sweat. It would seem like Elizabeth has no chance of escaping. However, she uses a powerful attack that knocks Meliodas out and gives her enough time to escape. With this attack, Elizabeth proves her offensive capabilities are no less impressive than her healing abilities. Later, Mael lets us know that the goddess Elizabeth was on par with Meliodas in regards to power. As warriors, they were on the same level. At first, I didn't read too much into this, probably because Elizabeth seemed to be healing and cleansing most of the time rather than using offensive magic. She didn't do much against Zeldris and the original demon, but she didn't need to because King with full-grown wings and Mael with sunshine were more more than strong enough to handle them. 
When the Demon King takes over Meliodas' body, the others attack, but Elizabeth doesn't. Then, Bon arrives, and we never get to really see what Elizabeth is fully capable of. She does enter Meliodas' mind with the other sins so she can help boost his morale and give him the emotional strength he needs to defeat the Demon King from the inside, but she doesn't play a big role in the fighting itself. Her arc, along with Merlin's perfect cube and King's pollen garden, don't appear to be strong enough to hold the Demon King inside. Everyone eventually helps to defeat the Demon King, but Bond definitely played the major role in that fight. So up to that point in the manga, Elizabeth didn't seem that strong compared to Meliodas and Bond. I assumed that she didn't do much against the Demon King because she couldn't, but now it appears like I was mistaken. Perhaps if Bond didn't show up, we would have seen a much more powerful Elizabeth than we saw up to that point. But Bond did show up, and he was strong enough so that Elizabeth wasn't really necessary for the fight. When we look at the most recent events in the manga, it seems like like what Miles said about Elizabeth being on par with Meliodas before wasn't as absurd as it may have sounded at first. Elizabeth says she wants to come with Meliodas when he's going to fight Demon King Zeldris. He agrees, but he doesn't just ask her to come with him so he can protect her, he asks her to fight alongside him. He believes that she can fight at his side as an equal. At the fight, Demon King Zeldris grabs Elizabeth. He tells Meliodas that dragging this burdenous extra baggage along was a mistake, referring to Elizabeth. He assumes that he was just trying to protect her from the curse. Then Elizabeth laughs at the idea that the Demon King will hold her hostage. Elizabeth confidently looks at the Demon King and tells him that she hasn't come to be a burden on Meliodas. She's come to defeat the Demon King. She proceeds to send the Demon King flying with her power. By the end of her attack, the Demon King is wounded bloody, while Elizabeth is completely unharmed. Meliodas says if you underestimate her, you'll end up in a world of pain, just like I did a long time ago. As the Demon King, I'm sure you know what they used to call Elizabeth in the underworld, right? Bloodstained Ellie. End quote. What an epic transformation this was. Elizabeth went from being a constant damsel in distress in the beginning of the series and has become someone who can overpower the Demon King with her attack. Meliodas suggests that he ended up in a world of pain himself when he underestimated her in the past. And he gives us another interesting fact. The demon world used to refer to Elizabeth as Bloodstained Ellie. This implies that, like Meliodas, Elizabeth wasn't always the person she is today. Most of the time now, she's a kind soul who heals and cleanses people for their own good. However, it appears like she was able to be quite brutal in the past. She spilled a lot of demon blood before she changed her ways. It seems like she could always use such powerful attacks, she just never did because she didn't want to hurt people. But now, against the Demon King, she is ready to go all out. She is ready to be as merciless as she probably was before she met Meliodas. Obviously, the Demon King should have more up his sleeves, and he was probably caught off guard too, but it does seem like he is infuriated and concerned about Elizabeth's great power. My prediction is that it will take the combined effort of Elizabeth and Meliodas to finally defeat the Demon King once and for all. Elizabeth has clearly been holding back until now, but no more. We will see Elizabeth at full power, 100% serious, and it seems that what Miles said was not far from the mark. Because she's not holding back, and she's fighting for someone she loves, she might just be on par with Meliodas' power. We saw the huge transformation that Elaine underwent for Bon, and how much more powerful she became, and since the goddess Elizabeth has a much higher base power level, we should expect her to be able to grow insane amounts for Meliodas. Not even Mile with Sunshine or a King with Full Grown Wings could do anything against the Demon King when he was in Meliodas' body, and yet Elizabeth just straight up embarrassed him. Him with her OP attack. Elizabeth's evolution is the single most dramatic power transformation that we've seen in the series. She's gone from being one of the weakest characters to being one of the strongest. She went from being one of the most easily frightened and shy characters to being one of the most confident and bold characters. I personally can't wait to see what happens next, but let me know what you think about Elizabeth's transformation and her newly revealed power. Did you actually see it coming or did you think that Elizabeth was more of a powerful healer than a fighter like I did? And that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't, be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell for more 7 Deadly Sins videos. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button to let me know. For even more 7 Deadly Sins content, follow us on Instagram at AnimeUproar. A big thank you goes out to our patrons over on Patreon who help make these videos possible. I especially want to thank our pro tier patrons, the one and only Gilgamesh, Chubbs is the man, 
nothing but a fan, and Jason Wilson, and are the one tier patrons, the ones who stand atop all clans, Baby Ray, A17 FFDP, Steven Ingrata, Alola Natem, Matty Mac 239, and Michael Calderon. If you enjoy our work, you can support more of it by going over to patreon.com slash anime uproar and becoming a patron today for as little as one dollar. If you do so, you'll get your name featured in future videos alongside these epic people right here, and you'll even get access to our private patron-only Discord. So check out patreon.com slash anime uproar, link in the description if you're interested. Anyways, thanks again for all of your support, and until next time, see ya, space cowboys.